guys welcome to or welcome back to Exposed and if I'm welcoming you back and you like it here I'd love it if you stayed and subbed here we go part three this should be it here it is she writes ridiculously long this was from November 19 2019 see she keeps everything She, she could write me a whole email back then, but didn't have the courtesy to do it and came on to my channel and said something nasty. She didn't say anything nasty. And her email starts out with, hi, Lori, I've debated over whether or not I should send this message. My thoughts were that you may not receive it in the spirit that it was given. I've been in that headspace. However, you have been on my mind for quite some time, so I decided to just pray that you will understand that I'm not for evil. I'm always for good. Okay, I didn't come on her channel and say anything negative to her ever. You are an amazing person. She we didn't, have a lot in common. She didn't say anything terrible. In fact, sorry, I've got a new fan and it I just moved it and it's like one of those Oh for the love of it It can raise up at the back and because I moved it it's oop what's happened there? It's clinked up a thing or down a thing what and i just want to get it sat on this lap tray so it's not going to fall off what i'm going to do that's what i was about to say what i'm going to do at the end of this is i'll go and find you and find what helen actually said on that video or should i do it now what I'll do is, right, I'll stop this so I'll know where it is. I'll put it in here. And then you can hear a rant. So if I stop this for a second. So, Lardy says she's being deliberately pro provocative, trying to annoy people. Then she says a load of stuff and then Helen comes in and I will read you Helen's comment. Oops, wrong thing. Where is we? there let me just check okay they've also had skid marks i'm sure i'm pretty sure Dad, what does that mean no i'm not stopping she was going on about the queen peas Donald Trump pees and shakes his willy to drop, get the last drops off. And now she's saying, I'm sure they've left skid marks as well on her video entitled. Okay, well, we're going to talk about your queen. We're going to talk about your queen. The queen has had, she let him do that. I'm being very, very, very provocative here because I'm trying to upset people that are watching. That's the helicopter. All right, so she said all that and then Helen came in and said, you have this title and this is what you're talking about. You succeeded. I'm upset. Good night. I'll let it roll so it comes up so you can all see it. Yes, but we don't know for sure. But we know that they pee. Helen, no. You didn't hear the beginning of it. I talked a lot about this. I went on to other things. You have to watch the whole thing. I've been on for 152 minutes. I am disgusted by this. This just turned into something else. 
it turned into something else but you still left that title on it and you didn't cut that bit off at the end I am so upset about this see someone comes on in the middle and I know Helen <sighs> no I'm I've been on for how long is 153 minutes it's a long time I've talked about jewelry I've talked about other things I put this in the title that was my original talking about it we've been on and off the subject and um, I'm disgusted this entire video is on my channel if you want to go and see it, it's called Laurie Beth 428. Nothing was edited because she said I edited what she said when she she says she didn't say that. I edited it to make it sound like she said that. So that's what Helen said. I'll read it again. You have this title and this is what you're talking about. You succeeded. I'm upset. Good night. Right, I'll stop this now and put it the clip in and it'll all make sense in the end. Where am I? there you should have heard or read what helen actually said in that video and now you can hear lardy rant about it um, and we're divorced single parents of young men we're close in age we're only children we're not close to extended families we love wigs lol You've been through hell over the past couple of years. I can totally identify. I've been there too. I realize that YouTube is a stream of revenue for you. And all that negativity sell because we are in a sick world. I know you need the money. I don't need the money that bad that I would, that I like the negativity. I do not like the negativity. I just won't put up with the negativity and I address the negativity. I don't ignore it. So like when you, Helen, if you're watching and you come on and you say some shitty thing on my live stream, rather than giving me the benefit of the doubt, thinking, wow, gee, this doesn't seem like Lori, which everyone, by the way, did say in the comments. I'm sorry, I'm gonna, gonna have to go now and look so that I know what I'm saying when I respond to her, because she's blowing this way out of proportion i shall be back okay so i so basically what this boils down to again she's jealous she's jealous it bugs her that i have people on here that i'm making money even with the negative people it bought it bugs her okay no, it doesn't. Because you don't write this long letter to somebody. It's tough to get out of a negative place. A year ago, if you told me that in a year I would be in a new state with a great job and a beautiful apartment waiting for me to move into, I would have said, it, that's impossible. I can't afford to move. My credit score is $500. I'll never get approved for an apartment. I don't know where to move. However, I began to get sick of my own negativity and I decided the only way things would change would be if I changed. I've moved to Arizona. I am not a negative person. I've never been negative about myself. I have never said I can't, I won't. I've never said I can't get a guy. I've never said I can't move. I've never said I can't do anything because I don't believe that. I know that I can do anything I want and I'm not an alcoholic, have never been dependent on a substance, and I'm not in recovery. Um, you are dependent on a substance. It's called food. Most people eat till they're full. You don't know the meaning of the word full. You even said it yourself earlier. You've never felt a minute's hunger in your life. So don't speak to me from a place of recovery. That's your street. This is my street. Ugh, nothing worse than, like, now she's, you know, somebody who's found God or is in recovery, whatever. Boba my sis. Remember, all she said was, you've succeeded, I'm upset. 
So she's throwing her under the bus. Yeah, of course you got, you began to get sick of your own negativity because you are a negative person. I'm not. I just don't put up with negative shit. And I address it. I had to bite the bullet and make things happen while on public assistance, food stamps, and Medicaid. I've never been on any of that, just saying. All the while fighting the thoughts that said, you will never get out of the situation. I've never said those thoughts to yourself, but you have. It was not easy. I went to therapy weekly. I went to outpatient groups three times a week. I did a ton of crying. I did a ton of praying. I was mad at everyone and everything. That's you, not me. Exactly. That's what she's saying. It was her. She's not saying that to you. That's the way you're picking it up. That's not what she put down. I'm by no means telling you what to do in your situation. Oh, you're not? Okay, but you, this is an awfully long email that you thought about whether to say. I'm just sharing my journey with another sister in the hopes that it will help. And I was always very nice to her. If you've made it this far into the message, I would like to offer a small piece of advice. This is when I had to brace myself. Oh, my God. Uh, Does she not realize that this shows her true colors? Shows what? A narcissistic piece of shit she really is. I spent over 20 years on Wall Street, my last six as a senior VP. I know that you have a similar background, another thing we have in common. Because I was upper level management, executive, and multitude of other things. Yeah. No one believes that, Lardy. None of us. If you have to count on your fingers, you don't know how to spell and you can't form a proper sentence, why would we believe you held those positions? And now you're looking for a million jobs and you can't get any of them because you're not what you portray yourself to be. And even if you talk yourself into the job, you're in it two minutes and you're complaining you can't cope. Even though you were upper level management, whatever bollocks you just said. But when I got laid off in 05, my skill set became obsolete. Well, my skill set's not obsolete. I bounced around a couple of jobs that paid 15 an hour. My last year on Wall Street, I grossed 190 k Shame on you for grossing that and, not, and, then, and then losing it all. If I had $190,000, I guarantee you, I would still have that principle. Ne no, you wouldn't. Because you've just said you were upper level management. You were earning that. You were in top job. So why are you not still in a top job then? Talking bollocks. Never use your principle. The last job that I had was delivery schedule at a furniture store. I hated it. And thankfully, thankfully got laid off and collected unemployment. That's when I decided to go back to school in my mid forties. Okay, so she's leading up to me, suggesting like I never thought of going back to school, which I'm not going to do. It gave me a- Oh, but you did, didn't you? When it benefited you to do it, not anybody else. So they were gonna pay you to do it. And you got your apartment because of it. You're never going to try and help yourself, but when there's money being handed out, you're there with your hand out, first in the queue, aren't you? I agree that almost ensures that I will always find employment. At 54, I'm already planning to go back for another certification to further solidify my employability. It's never too late. You're preaching to the choir, girlfriend. I agree, Olivia. Okay, I've said more than enough. Again, I so hope that you receive this message in the spirit that it was written. I claim no malice. And this is what I wrote back to her. Helen, I read your whole email, and you never have to even preface it with no malice. Because I know your heart. I feel like I know who you are. 
we've spoken. I appreciate you sharing your story and I've watched it happen through your Instagram and a few videos. And I'm so happy that you made it out of the tunnel and into the light. And it was not by accident. You made it happen. Every single step was you and God. Okay, now I'm going to respond to what you've said so that you understand where I'm coming from. I'm a very positive person. That is why I'm a survivor. That is why I'm living where I want to live. As you know, a lot of my situation is because I trusted my mother and it's taken over two years to try and turn the ship around. My proverbial ship, my life, has been attacked. You don't have to explain it. We are grown-ups. We do understand what you're saying. Fucking hell. We know you're not driving a ship. Packed two more times as I was trying to turn around. The first time was when she up and left, and the second time was with the car. And the third time was just recently when she asked to stay here. That was in California. And I equivocally said no. Really? Upper level management, uh huh. And then I ended it for my own safety, my own sanity, which it's still gone on. I don't li live in a negative space in my head. I am nothing like you, Helen. Nothing. You got that right. You are nothing like Helen. Helen's an empathetic, caring person who sees somebody else who might need a bit of help and reaches out the hand to help her. You'd never do that. You expect everyone to come to your aid, but you'd never think of going to anybody else's. So, yeah, you're right. You're nothing like Helen. Helen's nice. I go through times that is negative, but 99% of the time I am upbeat, positive, and very happy with where I am, which is why I have hate, because... Most women, hi Stephanie, most women are not me. Most women are not as secure as I am, can't do half the things that I do, <laughs> aren't as nice and kind and yeah. good hearted. I have a job that I love that I make money at. I'm the top salesperson out of four. Oh, I wrote that wrong. I am the top salesperson out of four separate stores. This is when I worked for the eyeglass company, which I made hit numbers the same way I hit numbers with Sensi. I hit numbers that nobody in that business made. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even exist in the mall anymore. Yeah, because you took most of the stock home with you every night. I work in a bright, cheery, vibrant mall where I make friends and see people every day, which is exactly what I need. I don't have to stand for eight hours. My shift is six hours a day. I'm the team lead and merchandiser. My manager told me I was a godsend. And my team loves me. I just hired a new girl, interviewed her, onboarded her, trained her. In addition to that, my Sensi business is going great. I'm making perfume and jewelry and selling it. I will be creating my own website very soon. Still planning on doing that. I'm doing YouTube on the side and making a little money but certainly not enough to keep me doing YouTube. So I do it for other reasons. I'm working with replica companies that have reached out to me in addition to perfume companies and wig companies. And just, you just saw the beauty company and I get it all for free for doing reviews. What beauty company? I sell the bags, sunglasses, perfume, free things privately, giving people great deals. I'm on social. You're not supposed to sell PR. But of course, you never follow the rules, do you, Teflon Tessie? Security, disability insurance, and therefore I can only make a certain amount over and above what they give me. I also get Medicare. I tried to get a full time job in the last, in the past, as you know, and worked in those hours and having that stress of that kind of job was killing me, and I spent weekends sleeping to recuperate. I am physically very sick and chronic illnesses and pain all the time from them. I cannot and will not give up social security disability that I fought for, was denied three times, went before a judge by myself and was granted it. Granted it because I earned it. For How do you earn disability? You don't earn disability, Lardy. 
There's a safety net in most countries if you're sick or disabled that you get benefits. Some countries it's easier to get than others. But you don't earn it. Or do you say, oh, I've been, I've been in pain for 24 hours so I've earned my disability. No. You're either disabled or you're not. And I don't believe you are. All the years that I worked. Now my health is worse. Being diagnosed with interstitial cystitis guarantees me social security disability. I do everything for a reason. I haven't read this, so I don't even... Yeah, you do do everything for a reason. You make up every fucking illness you can think of that can't be proven and bamboozle doctors into saying that's what you've got so that you make sure you're on disability till the end of time. It's people like you that are stopping genuine people getting payment. But you'll get yours. No, I could... Like, I just announced that I'm on Social Security Disability, I'm sure. Most of you have figured out, I don't give a shit, call them, try to get, try to get it taken away from me. Try, try, try! I don't make enough on YouTube to stay because of the money. I have made wonderful friends like you on YouTube. God, I've been really, like, hurt and betrayed by people that I thought were my friends. Not going to lie that I, I'm not reading it. Not going to lie. Yeah, that hurts. That hurts because it's I would have never done this to her all over a five second thing she saw on a three hour video. What did she say? What did she say that was so terrible? You said I'm being provocative. She said you've won. I'm out. For me, it's like writing a book or an online diary. I vent like I would in a journal, and sometimes it seems as though it's several negative videos in a row, but my heart and head, while I'm ranting, I'm not feeling the emotions that you think I am. I'm not walking around angry at the haters. You do. You walk around chuntering all the time. When Helen said that, you blew that up in your head to be ten times worse than it actually was. It was a passing comment. But you made it into a big deal. Called her an alcoholic. Threw her under the bus and made sure she wouldn't want to be a friend with you anymore. I really, I honestly don't even think about them, to be honest, until I get one. Oh, maybe I should turn on the central heating. Oh, why didn't I think of that? How long were you doing that with Gal Charlotte? Moaning, walking around the pet shop because the girl didn't know what hand wipes you wanted. <sighs> Maybe you should look in the mirror more often, Lardy, and see. See you for who you truly are. I don't even think of them. I really don't. Same with Shawnee. That happened to come up by accident while going through my phone and organizing my photos and seeing the screenshots, then talking to my friend James, and he's the one that suggested I blast her. Okay, I'm not going to talk about James here. I never want to see her. I don't... Yeah. You're not going to say anything about James there until he says one thing that you don't like and then you're going to throw him under the bus. I don't have to, so I know how to distance myself from that negative world. I do not have money for emergencies. So if something happens that one of the pets needs surgery, I will ask my subscribers for help. This was back when I was in California. I no longer need to ask you guys for help because my expenses have gone way down. So I'm really fine where I am because remember this was November of 2019. I'm really fine where I am. I don't want what you have or what you've worked for. I don't want to go back to school. I don't want a big, important, high-paying job, mostly because physically I cannot, but also because I'm done with that chapter of my life. Because I'm fucking 57, okay? I'm not going to work my fucking ass off anymore. Uh, excuse me, when did you? When exactly did you work your ass off? Because none of us have seen that. 
I'll do a good job at what I do and I'll work very hard, but it's always gonna be part-time. I live in a beautiful area with a be and a beautiful apartment. I'm going to be moving to either a one bedroom or, or studio in June. That was my plan. Staying in California for at least another year, hopefully forever, but open to the possibilities of maybe not forever. You once told me I was a diamond among cubic zirconias. And that stuck with me and meant a lot to me because it's true. <laughs> My physical situation and financial situation will always change. But the one thing that will always remain. Sorry, I was just reading. Thank you, Stephanie. So sweet. Uh, my physical situation and financial situation will always change, but the one thing that will always remain constant and true is my self-love, and no one can take that away from me, teach it to me, give it to me, earn it for me, etc. That, to me, is greater than any job or materialistic thing or any educational degree. It's something I was born with and blessed with, and I thank God for it every day. Love, Lori. So I don't know what the point of her writing that to me was. I don't walk around angry. I just don't put up with shit. That's all. I don't walk around angry. I have, uh, I have, you know, an okay life. Could it be better? Yeah, I could be thinner. I could be in love. I could have a man. If this is what you strive for, I could have a man that loves me. But that, there's a whole bunch of other things that come with that. I have a son that adores me. I have a mother that is terrible to me, mm. Mm, cool that has is. written and said horrific things. Go and get another tattoo, you freak, in the middle of an argument is not terrible. You have no idea what having a bad mother means. None. Zilch. Nada. You were a spoiled fucking brat and you still are. That has done horrific things to me and to Burke. Burke's 21st birthday was yesterday. I bought him a brand new Apple watch for the one that he broke. Gungor gave him $150. His girlfriend took him to Long Beach to get a skateboard and then to Mastro's. And he got filet mignon, lobster mac and cheese and two drinks. And my mother called him and said, happy birthday. So I'm living at the Ritz and I have to be out by the 27th. So where do you think I should live? She made it about her. Oh, where did she learn that from? You? Ooh. I'm ashamed that she is my mother. She's blocked. <laughs> Do you need and her for something? This, but she blocked me. He said, my son turned 21 yesterday. He's now a man. I bought him a beautiful brand new Apple watch to replace the one that he broke. Gungor sent him 150. His girlfriend bought him a skateboard and took him to Mastro's, the most expensive restaurant in Orange County, made reservations a month before and paid for two cocktails, filet mignon and lobster mac and cheese. And what did you do? Called him, wished him happy birthday, then proceeded to make it about you as you always do and asked where you should live. The same thing you asked him the day before crying. I'm ashamed to call you my mother. If you're watching, because she watches me through YouTube, and I sent her all of the texts that she had sent me and she's saying they're not from her. Uh, yeah, you would have to do that because if you ever allowed your mind to admit that it was you that wrote those terrible things that has done terrible things to me and my family, you would not be able to live with yourself. Please tell her something terrible that she's actually done. Really terrible. What's the really terrible thing that your mother's done, apart from saying, no, I'm not giving you any more money? 
So continue to live. I said the Ritz. She's at a five-star hotel in Boston for a year. That's where she lives. At a five-star hotel in Good Boston. Good for her. And people think that I'm trying to get money from her. I don't get a dime. Burke doesn't get a dime. I get nothing because now she uses that she's paranoid and won't send anything in the mail. She Now she uses that she's paranoid and won't send anything in the mail. But before that, she did. And why should she still be fucking holding up a 57-year-old baby? Cut the frigging apron strings. She didn't sign up for this. Most children leave home in their 20s and they look after themselves and they get married and they have families and they make their own way in life. They're not still hanging out of their mother's tit at 50 fucking seven. He bailed out on Burke's graduation from high school the day before via text to me. But she has since come after that to California first class stayed at a really nice hotel to help me with my knees right okay okay yeah i'll get you're a fucking baby you could have looked after yourself you don't need somebody there pampering brushing your hair and fucking fluffing your pillows i've been betrayed by a lot of people i don't know how i got on this but you're all sitting there listening i have been betrayed by a lot of people that I thought were my friends. My best friends are in Boston. Mm -hmm. That's the only way they can deal friends with you. Friends that have been my best friends for 50 years. My friend Marjorie wrote me, she sent me this picture. This was her, her 50th birthday. So that's Marjorie, me, Lynn Glazer and Roberta, and Marjorie and Roberta are sisters. Marjorie's my age, her birthday's in July. So I had turned 50 in April and she turned 50 in July and Roberta turned, well, this is 50, but Roberta is a year younger. So Roberta, okay, so she sent me this picture. It was seven years ago and I wrote her, I said, I looked so great then. I've gained a lot of weight back. First thing. Not what a great memory of your turning 50. How nice to see all of us together. Oh, that was a perfect night. I remember it so well. You were so happy. Oh, didn't I look great then? Not a knock, are we? Since my recent losing weight, Burke's birth, Burke's 21 today. Got him an Apple Watch when he comes here. His girlfriend took him out, bought him a really nice skateboard, taking him for dinner. Um, you, 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 you. When, when do you ask Roberta or Marjorie or whichever one of the two of them it is why they <laughs> sent the picture and how they are? So she wrote, happy birthday to Burke. You still look gorgeous. And then she wrote about his picture. So grown up, because I'll show you his picture. Someone wrote and said, yeah. Look at my boy. I love how you cut his girlfriend out. I put a heart over her face and someone wrote, why did you put a heart over her face and couldn't figure out why? I said for privacy. I was like, I think you can figure that out. She was like, you don't like her? <sighs> you don't so know, said, do you? So, heading to, so grown up, so handsome. I'm heading to bed. Miss you, love you. I said... Miss you, love you too. She wrote, you done good, mama. So, what can I say? Fuck you to everyone that's, that's betrayed me. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you, Shawnee. Fuck you, Kim. Uh, fuck you, Helen. Fuck you to my mother. Who else? I don't know. A anyone else on the list? Fuck you. Let's see. Where's my charm? This slut says, fuck. Why does my mother live in a hotel? That's a whole other story. I don't really want to, I, I mean, I, you know, I don't want to get into the whole thing. 
It's all fucked up. It's so fucked up. He looks a little like Gungo. Hang on, I have to sniff again. Sorry, I'm all congested. He looks more like my father. You want to see pictures of my father? Do you guys want to see my father when he was 21? He's so handsome. I don't care what you say. I'm going to get the pictures. I'm going to show you. Hold on. Your dad when he was 21. That would be interesting to see against work. So sad. I agree, Cher. Do you believe in love after love? I fucking agree and fuck you to anyone that tries to hurt me. Oops. The, the fucking laugh of it all is no one's trying to hurt you you bring it all on yourself you always make it something it isn't and then turn it around and make it into the whole world against Lardy I've shown everybody what Helen said that was no reason for you to lose your shit well, of course you did and you've held a grudge ever since over nothing a life huh? pump pump and so what will the haters say the haters think that i did something so terrible to make my mother because who in their right mind would up and move and leave their daughter and grandson practically in the middle of the night the haters are like she ran for her life that's why she left everything behind and went in the middle of the night if she was going to be if she was trying to be mean she'd have said i'm going and i'm leaving you and i'm never going to give you another penny and i hope you rot here but she didn't she had to run in the middle of the night what does that tell you she left in the middle of the night because I say she left in the middle of the night. She didn't leave in the middle of the night, stupid fucking assholes. I say that because she might as well have left in the middle of the night. She up and left me with two apartments and all of her shit. And she lives out of a suitcase. That's her life. Good for her. Even though I've offered to help her move here. Okay, here's Burke when he was... Why would she want to move there when she had to run away from you? Which bit of that don't you fucking understand? Two. <laughs> Cute. At a farm. I used to do creative memories. Uh, this was my fa a bunch of my father's headshots. I can't really see them too well on this one, but... We can't because you're wiggling them about. Better. This was me in preschool. Mm-hmm. Perfect Doesn't little knock. No. Okay. Oh, my mother also said, don't ever show my picture of me in my wedding dress. Okay, well, there it is. My gorgeous mother. She was gorgeous. 24-inch waist, tan. Look she's, at that. She's still gorgeous. This was 1960. I like the dress what too. What a gorgeous woman. I love the short sleeves. You ready to see my father? Ugh. <laughs> really? Who says that about their dad? That's just fucking weird, Lardy. I'm sorry. You're weird. You're swooning over him now and you wouldn't have anything to fucking do with him and he was in a home and needed help. Fucking weirdo. It wasn't my father. That is my daddy. Not my daddy, but my, my daddy. My dad. It would have been his 81st birthday, July 16th. He had blue eyes like me. You haven't got blue eyes. Fuck's sake. It's a headshot. No shit, really? This is in the 60s when these glasses were very popular. Still, handsome guy. Uh, me and Gungor, I was 31, and Gungor was 23. 
hang on, I'm trying not to glare. Okay. Now, Burke, Gungor looks, looks very ethnic. Oh, and I'm wearing the, the earrings that have the hearts and the hoops. And I was 31, so I don't think HRH was even born yet. And you don't think Sorry. Burke looks like him? Mm hmm. We weren't married yet, we were going to a wedding. No, I wasn't close to my father. And he left, when he left me, when he left my mother, he left me. And he left me with that mother. So, you know. Burke has his this eyes. Is why I have so much love for myself because I had to. His name was not spelled A L L E N, it was spelled A L A N. He was married here. So, this is between 1960 and 1963. trying to be James Dean with the cigarette. I think Burke looks like a lot. Yeah, Burke does. So this is the way he spelled his name. The haters have found his obituary. Why are you holding a piece of paper with your dad's name on? Why have you trump that from home to home and why don't you have if you did fucking saving memories thing whatever that bollocks was why aren't all your pictures in a photo album or a scrapbook instead of in a pile like that you can google it too alan langer marblehead massachusetts He was in his 20s here. My grandmother, his mother, used to, like, press his ears back. Talk something about his physical appearance, make him insecure about his ears. She drew this picture of him. In 19... July 24th, 1952. Oh, this is me and Burke when I took him on the duck tour. My little baby. <sighs> duck tour. And then I guess when my father, we went to Curacao. So this is from the Coral Cliff Hotel Curacao. He drew this cartoon of a motorcyclist. says, I think I can, I think I ran over something back there. I think I finally got the hang of this green light business. It's just cool that I have it. So much artisticness in my family. This is me and my first husband. Artisticness. You never did tell us why that Marriage only lasted nine months, did you? Mark, hang on. Hang on. I hate these old things. That so passe. I was 22, he was 25. I weighed 153. Things you remember. Mm, things you and remember. His glasses weren't dark, but they were transition lenses and they, haven't perf they weren't perfected, so... I look happy. Were you? You say we you look to happy. went Paradise Island in the Bahamas. And I got, let's see, I had my period the day that I got married. Walking down the aisle, I had my period. Then I got third degree burns on my back. And, you know, honeymoon, you really want to be able to be on your back and not bleeding. And I remember on the plane... I got, I said, my eyes, oh my God, I'm married. And I turned to him and I said, I love you. And he goes, yeah. And I said, oh shit. <sighs> that was me. No shit. I was watering plants. This was the beginning of my black thumb. But my mother put two barrettes in my hair. I had very straight hair, straight, silky hair when I was 
little. Then I did Creative Memories. This was Burke's first haircut, and of, co of course. Can you see? No. no you can't. It's too dark. crying. He was not happy. I've shown you guys this before. This is when we had a bunny. This is me and Burke. I went and got a perm at JCPenney. <laughs> I had a perm and bleached my hair. Like, what was I thinking? But look at my little babu. <laughs> <laughs> look at the bunny. <laughs> and your bunny in the front. And look, I used to decorate. Let me find. Here's the front of our house. Why aren't they in a fucking look folder or something? These little eyes. And then. A cute kid, isn't he? What was that? That pattern was called. Moon doggy. The bun. I know. Honey bun. Burke says I look like a man here. I had just had him. But Burke sees his face. Now tell me, do you think that no. Burke looks like me? That is Burke no. in a girl. He looks like Gungo. I'm sorry. I don't see Burke in your face at all. Baby Burke. Just a few days old. With whom? Yeah, I don't see you supporting his and head. This was his first birthday party. We had tons of people in the backyard of my house. This was when he was in the hospital. In the goldfish bowl. Oh, look at this. I showed him this. I said, look at Burke. Because that was his foot and that's my foot. And my foot looks the same, but his doesn't. Look at his little foot. It's bigger than mine now. It's a big, ugly man foot, and he still makes me cut his toenails. Look at him. I let him have long hair. Such a beautiful boy. Oh, I loved him. Then I cut out each one of these squares. He was into the wig. I loved him. Bulls. This was for guitar. He was so into guitar. And this was the front of my house. With um, It was me and my mother at the time. And I decorated all that. And I could move. Look at this picture of him. Mm -hmm. Here he is, oh. chubby. Singing. <laughs> That was the day that Gungor became a United States citizen. Here he is with his first girlfriend, Haley, still like. Oh, and then here he is with Santa. God, he's the only kid with Santa that isn't crying. And this isn't, that a, isn't that the law? That you have photos of your kids with Santa bawling their eyes out and trying to run away and you have to have the one where they're completely orange from head to foot because they've had spaghetti. Isn't that the law with baby pictures? It's his third birthday. The top. It should say so you don't and forget. Kate, I had Nemo come. I felt so bad for poor Nemo who was a woman and it was really hot July 23rd. She was in that costume. I was so afraid she was going to faint from heat stroke. I kept saying, you sure you're okay? You sure you're okay? Oh, my God. And now he's... Oh, this is my father holding Burke. My father had MS, so he... Uh, couldn't like he never walked after he was 35 he was in a chair and his third wife who ended up dying before him had to feed him and everything he could type like 50 words a minute with a stick but he was still i've forgiven my father my father wasn't crazy he was just selfish 
Um, but I've forgiven him because I, I, he, he was not, he wasn't a nice person. Like Burke would, someone gave him one of those huge chocolate bars and Burke, when he was little, saw it and said, Oh, chocolate bar. And my father was like, that's for me. <laughs> and he meant it like very, very selfish man. Did not know. Oh, I never knew where you got it from. Now we know how to be a father. I mean, he was a father at 23. But I... Yeah, so was Jed. I was... Well, was he still 23? When we married, he was 23 and I was 29. I remember when I went to book, it was a registry office in Pathelli, in North Wales, and I went to book it and yeah, they're writing everything down and they said uh, the ages I said 23 and 29 and he went right you're 23 and I said no I'm 29 and he was like really and then on the day Jed turned up and they said who are you and he says I'm the groom and you're supposed to be 23 and he's like I am <laughs> because he was got he went bald young and he's like I am 23 I've just had a, a hard life <laughs> it's funny but yeah, when we got together, I got pregnant at 29 and had tech help at 30. So Jed was either 23 or 24 and he was a bloody good dad. So age has got fuck all to do with it, Lardy. I have totally forgiven him. I talked to him. I wish he was here because I think he could help me a lot with my mother. So... Basically, other than my son, I don't have anybody. No, my mom. How could he help you with your mother when he was married two times after her? He, he's got nothing. He couldn't say anything to your mother now, could he? Maybe back in the day, but not now. She wouldn't listen to him. Why should she? Mother never remarried. No. My father remarried twice after my mother. Three marriages. I'm on two marriages. So that's it. That's my life. You guys, when you say I'm not honest, oh, I don't know anybody that's as honest on here as me. Hi, Devin. You're demented if you think you're the only person that's honest on YouTube. There's lots of honest people on YouTube. So when you think about trying to hurt me, which, like I said, I don't want people that I don't know, I don't care if they hate me. But just know that I have plenty of hurt I have plenty of people that pretended to love me, pretended to be my friend. I don't have anybody that has my back. I don't need somebody writing me, telling me from their recovering alcoholic point of view. I don't need the Shawnees. I don't need the Helens. I don't need the Carols. I don't, I don't. I mean, I've learned to survive on my own because of struggle. And honestly, if you read the lyrics from Taylor Swift's new song, struggle makes you stronger. Struggling makes you strong. Without struggling, you don't know when you have good times. You need the struggle in life To get to the top like if you're climbing a mountain how fun would it be to just shoot up the top it's a struggle and then it's an accomplishment when you get to the place that you want to get through if it's just an even comfy road you better hold on because nobody's life is easy and smooth and comfortable Lisa's but is. I don't purposely go and attack people. I don't purposely go yes, you do. and write something to people. 
I don't go to HRH and write on her thing. I mention her a couple of times in here. She's innocuous to me. She doesn't even know me. She doesn't even know that I'm writing about her unless someone goes to her. I know, Lindsay, that part bothers me. I don't want to cry. And this isn't because of old age. It's just I've just realized it now that I don't rely on any help from her. You shouldn't be relying on help from her at your age. Which bit of that don't you get? I really get very swallowed up in that whole mindset of, you know, that I have nobody and that, thank you, Devin, and that, because I really don't. And it's not because of me. Yes, it is. That's true, Deirdre, you do. See, like, I always thought life was supposed to be mostly happiness with a little bit of sadness until Roberta said to me, no, life is struggle and sadness and heartache and hurt and pain and suffering with little bits of happiness in there. And it's true. That's a cheery thought. I am proud, Zora. Lindsay, I'm sorry that your mother died when you were 21. That's a terrible age to lose your mother. Like if there's any age to be terrible to lose your mother, it's 21. Ugh. I need tums. I mean, isn't that what Buddhism is? The end of suffering? Like when you become... Life is suffering. It just is. And we all experience it now. Because everybody is suffering now. Whether you're sick or staying in, these are not happy times. Hmm, funny that. You used to laugh about me being stuck in my room. Never said I was suffering, did you? Never showed me any empathy. But now all of a sudden, because you're doing it, These are not happy times. So. Is this going to be a four-parter? I thought it was three hours. It looks like it'll be four hours. I come on here to just share my life, share my animals, share my thoughts. I don't go and attack people until they attack me or do something to hurt me. And then, Tracy, that's so sweet. Love you, Lori. I mean, who doesn't want to be told that? What did Helen do to attack you? Please explain because you haven't as yet. Thank you. Unless someone has done something to me, I don't attack, but I do attack if they do attack me. And I will out you if you do something really terrible to me. Just know that. I've always said that. I have a platform. I will call you out. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. Don't fuck with me. Just don't fuck with me on my channel. Like, if it's a private thing... I won't say, I've, I've talked about my mother, yes, because there were reasons that I needed to ask for help because of my car and stuff like that. So I had to like say these things, but you know, the whole Shawnee thing, it was because we both were on YouTube. The whole Kim thing was because she let all those haters, she met me in person. We had a great time. She let all those haters sway her mind, tell her not to be friends with me. No, she didn't. It wasn't the haters. It was her husband. Get your facts right. 
and she didn't even have the decency to tell me, to call me and say, I can't, this is too much, whatever. And she acted like she was this big thing. Oh my God, no, I can handle the haters. I don't know. She was worse. She's worse than Shawnee. Worse. So much worse. Shawnee 2.0. Oh my God. Phony, 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 phony. Phony. So phony. I can't believe how phony purse tripping. It's funny, isn't it? They're wonderful until they get to meet you and then all of a sudden you realise they're phony. You don't see it before you meet them, no. It's when they've met you that you suddenly decide they're phony. Uh -huh. You were horrible that day you had that meet, meet up at whatever it was, that burger place. You started shouting abuse at her fucking subscribers when it was nothing to do with you. But you'll look at that and see nothing wrong with it. Where everyone else was like, whoa, what the fuck's she doing? Oh, that would really piss me off. How dare they talk to you like that? They were her subscribers and all they said was, when's the next bag sale? And you went off the deep end. Because they weren't bowing at your feet and saying how wonderful it was to see you in one of her videos. So I made more haters. Don't care. Don't care. Weed out the hate. I weed out the haters. I know who's the hater. I don't have people on pretending to be hate to be likers when they're really haters. There's some okay, so some of the haters try to make me think that that's what they're doing, but I don't believe it. I think that's just gaslighting. I don't believe it. Because honestly, I don't have anybody. Three hours later, you're eating freezing cold chips. Really? That is super nice to my face and then backstabs me. And if you are, you're not being super nice. Like, I don't have anybody that's like, I don't know. I don't even know what that means. Pretending to be my friend. So let's say Thelma. She comes on here and she comments and she pretends. She, hi, Lori. Oh, hi. I love you. Your videos are my favorite. I'll pay $5 for your Patreon. Okay. And then she goes and she acts nice to my face. Is on my Patreon. Is on my YouTube but she's really giving me a thumbs down on YouTube. Okay. And then she goes on to the gossip site and trashes me. I don't, I don't tell people in my real life stuff that you guys don't know. Everybody knows everything. Lizzie hasn't pooped in two days. His light went out. See, he's at the top of his log. Hang on. Do I really need to know when Lizzie poops? Like, get on someone's channel and call them fat? Who does that? It's just fucked up. Okay, so I do this every night. Oh, wait. Sleepy, Lizzie. Can you please sleepy? I want you to feel secure. He likes to be on this in the morning. Hey, find him on his hand. Hey, good night, Lizzie. Why don't you put this? Close that quietly and stop scaring the fucking animal. Banging it shut. Why don't you just cover it up this. completely? His lamp will go on in the morning. Right, that's why. But nothing will burn. And that way he's all 
enclosed, so if, like, the cat comes over, he still feels safe. We want everybody in this house to feel safe. Gucci's still up there. Here's my one of my abused dogs. What time is it? 11.10. Okay, we'll, we'll end with a little bit of pom-pom. Yeah. Fish breath. Fish breath. Mommy loves you. Mommy loves you so much, even though you smell really, really bad. Boo, 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 boo. Boo, boo. So that helps shouting down what our else ears. Do we want to talk about? The weather today was 89 and gorgeous. Didn't need, I don't even need, I've been thinking of turning my air conditioning off, but it sounds so weird. I'm too afraid. I'm afraid I won't get it back on. So I just opened my door because it's been too cold. This is Papa Pussy. People make up screen names that say Baby Goose. Have a good weekend. Karen. Oh, sorry, Tracy. Karen, I, you're always really nice. Tracy, I'm sorry. Everyone says family's everything. I don't believe that. I've been hurt by... Um, excuse me. Family is everything. That's you and Burke. That's your family. That should be all you need. They're not talking about the family that you have. You have to be his family now. It's always about Lardy though, isn't it? Poor little unloved Lardy. So many people in my family. Not my grandparents though. My grandparents were everything. <clears throat> I had the best childhood with them. See? Grandma Norma. I had two grandmothers, so I had Grandma Norma and Grandma Mildred. Mildred was my father's mother. Norma was my mother's mother, who I loved. And then my grandfather, Harry, who I named Burke after. Harrison Burke. Harrison. Yes, Burke will extend, but I'll be old by the time he has kids, hopefully. Hopefully he'll wait. I won't be, I mean, I'm. my mother was a grandmother with Burke at 60. That's three years for me. Because I was 36 when I had him. But you know, Gungor and I have been through our war. And if I called him and said, I need you to come here, he would. Not anymore, he won't. <gasps> oh my God, Stephanie. I would be afraid. I was afraid of my ex who tried to kill me. I don't want to go into it, Stephanie. Because I have to... Not that I don't care, because I like you, but I have to, I, I have to keep this in order. Everyone is going to start saying all of their family horror stories. So, like what Tracy wrote, shit stories, Lori, LOL. Unfortunately, I understand. Let's leave it at that. When I was younger, I could be judgmental, but I've learned everyone has a story. I could totally roommate with Gungor, totally. I, I'm still judgmental, but I stop myself. I, I realize when I'm doing it because it only hurts me. It, it puts me in a bad mood. If I watch HRH and, and I fester on something she has said or done, or if I watch the... See, if I fester on something she said or done, that's what you do all the time, every time.
is fester over what people have said instead of just letting it go like you say you do. It is a four hour video, bloody hell. Real Housewives of New York City and, and their entitlement and this and that and I start thinking about it and focusing on it. It makes me feel rotten. So I just, I, I have learned when I go to that place of gossiping because it's just a natural thing, I stop myself. That's the difference. I stop myself. No, you don't. You do it on your channel. You gossip about people all the time, yet you say other people aren't allowed to go to a gossip site and gossip. So, you know, I could go on and on about Oh, oh my god, I hate Tucson. It's so dry, it's so dusty, there's nothing here, there's no sophistication, nothing to do, no, no, nothing outside, there's no place to work, there's not this, uh, and then I say, stop. You will make the best of it. You will find a place. You will go to the same bar. You'll find a great bar one of these days. And that's where you'll go. Where did you really, what did you do in Dana Point? Did you go to, I went to two places. I need two places that I like here. I'm sure I can find two places and I will make the best of it. I will make Tucson work for me. And if I don't like it, I'll move in a year. And I'm not judging anything on the state of the world right now. I don't even know what this place has to offer to me, but so I stop myself from telling myself that story because it's just a story that I'm telling myself. It's not happening. It's all how you look at it. It's all your own perspective, right? Baby Goose is falling asleep. I would have the best bar. Oh, I need a bar to go to, you mean, yes. Well, I would have the best, okay, like if I were in the hair salon, my salon would be so fun, or a nail salon. Oh my God, like I used to go to the Asian salons in California and you know, they were all, like sometimes I would come in and everyone's sitting there and you know, someone comes to, someone comes to the door and everyone looks. So I just go, hi, I'm here. <laughs> I said it really loud. I've, I've like answered the phone for them because the guy was busy and I'd say, lovely nails, how can I help you? <laughs> I had two loving grandparents. My my grandma Mildred, not so good. She was okay. She's like decent, but she never did anything mean to me or anything. But my grandfather, that's who I was closest with. He walked me down the aisle. He taught me to drive. I was once at a cousin's wedding and I was so uncomfortable. He drove home during the dinner with me so I could change into a different dress and then drove back. He was That's my nice. everything, my grandpa. He was everything. I love you, grandpa. He's watching me. He's watching you and wondering what the fuck happened to you. An angel that looks over me that keeps me from being homeless. So all I would do is say to those poor miserable haters that are on that terrible site, swimming in that sea of sewage, get yourself out. Not all of you belong there. It's harder to not gossip than it is to gossip. Don't take the easy way. If you don't like me, don't watch me. It is Eldritch Ma. What? And let you away with everything. If I didn't keep watching you and holding you accountable, you'd get away with all this bollocks you're spewing. Helen was horrible to you. She wasn't. She made a simple comment. She didn't call you out. She didn't say anything. She just said, yep, it worked. Because you said you were deliberately trying to annoy people. What did you expect would happen? 
Anyway, I'm calling it here because there's another hour and 15 minutes that I didn't realise there was. I thought it was a three hour video, but it's not. It's a four hour one. So this is part three, done and dusted. And I will be back in part four. <laughs>